Hey, what's up, guys? Hope everybody's uh, staying safe. How's everybody doing this morning? Hope everybody can hear me. Uh, we'll be starting the pod, um, start streaming soon. Cool. It looks like everything is working. <coughs> Let me see. I can't see any of the chat. If you guys can reply or. Just get started in a few minutes. I uh, just want to give everybody a little bit of uh, time to kind of join. So I'm not seeing anything in the in the chat. Hey, what's up guys? If you guys can hear me, can you guys please reply on the on the chat? Just want to make sure everybody can hear me. Yeah, I still can't see anything on the chat, but let's uh, let me log in through the website. Maybe there's something up. Okay, looks like it's failing to connect. So let's uh, 
Let's double check it. Once we get this going, we can uh, we can continue to work on this guy or the little alien guy. Let me log out completely because maybe there's something wrong with the cache. You guys can hear me, right? Oh, you guys can hear me, okay. Well, I'm have to log into um, to each other's uh, the web pages, I guess, uh, since restream is not working. There we go. Let me mute myself on each one of those guys, just to make sure I get you guys. See, well, I'm working on this uh, this mech guy that I'm working on here uh, that we blocked out, but we also have uh, another character that let me uh, let me load up. Let me just go grab that character real quick. Yeah, for some reason the restream is not not working at all. Sucks because uh, I have to open each one of these. Let me open up my Facebook one too. Hopefully that doesn't start to kill the bandwidth. If it does, then I'll have to kill one of those and hopefully more people can join. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. All right, looks like there's a few people on Facebook and a whole bunch of people on YouTube and Twitch. So just give me a second to see what we can do about this. Everything's pretty slow. I don't know what's going on. Give me one second, guys. Switch back to this guy. <coughs> yep, it looks like the chat on this thing is just not working unless there's a new version. Let me just download the new version and install that and then uh, get you guys going. Hopefully, that would. Um, Maybe fix some of these issues. If not, we'll have to do with this.
sorry for the hiccup guys but uh, this happens just has sucks that it's happening right now when uh, we're working on this but it's all good So this is one of the aliens we're working on, uh, but I think this is the old version. I'm trying to find the latest version to show you guys some of the progress. Now we'll just have to work on something else. progress that I was were making on Let's hide this Yeah, it looks like the chat's not gonna work. So we're gonna be on. Um, we're gonna be checking back and forth between uh, YouTube and Facebook. Sorry, guys. So if you guys have a question, if you guys could go to one platform, that would be better. But if not, then uh, I'm probably gonna miss some of your questions. So I'll keep both open. Hopefully, they don't eat up all my bandwidth, so we can, you know, no hiccups. But not a big deal. Uh, so let me show you guys some of the stuff that we're working on. Do some test renders on. Let me switch this to a GPU mode real quick. <coughs> but yeah, sorry guys, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a hiccups, but it's okay. No big deal. There you go. So that's actually the newer head. So I was doing some of these renders that I'll show you guys now on uh, the this alien that we're working on. Just uh, test rendering some of the things. Just check out the primary form, secondary form to see how some of the stuff is working. Uh, one of the nice things I really like about this uh, this workflow is that it's still very very early on, but I can start seeing. Uh, what's happening with all these shapes, you know, and not just in ZBrush because sometimes in ZBrush the renders are great But um, I like to see it more like in the final render where I'm going to be rendering them at which is uh, Arnold in my case Oh, thank you guys Appreciate you guys joining the stream and here here's a you know quick tech to quick test render on that Let's turn off uh, a few things to make it a little quicker But here I can start seeing, like, you know, some of the shapes that I had last week, I didn't like, so I tweaked a lot of that stuff. And you guys can see here how some of that stuff is fading. Even here, I still have some transition things to work on, specifically the ear, <coughs> which we'll probably be working on today. Uh, I, we didn't want to start working on some of the hands, so I think that's probably what we're going to be doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect thing to be doing, right, Ian? How's it going, man? Yeah, you guys could um, check some of that stuff out. Feel free to follow me on um, on Instagram or wherever to see some more progress. In fact, let me show you some links first before we continue. Because um, I know some of you guys might ask about my interface and all that stuff. So this whole hiccups with uh, with restream kind of suck, but we'll get through that right now there we go it's the page I was looking for 
So if you guys want to know more about my work, come check out magvfx.com. You can see my portfolio there. Uh, if you guys want my UI, go to gumroad.com uh, slash mag. You guys will be able to download my uh, UI. And if you guys want to use some of the shaders, follow along. Uh, same thing with uh, so, you know, social medias like Instagram. It's magvfx or just mag on, on, on our station. But yeah, let's continue on. I'm using Arnold. I prefer Arnold um, over V-Ray. Just for me, it's easier. So I, I tend to just kind of stick to that. But it doesn't matter at the end as long as you make it look good, you know? And it's already built into Maya, so I don't, you don't have to really worry about it too much. <coughs> so, yeah. So here's our guy uh, I wanted to start working on. Let's just save this file real quick before we continue. How's everybody holding up? I hope everybody's being creative with all their, uh, all their time. Uh, it's mag VFX. Uh, let me, uh, let me send you guys a link to that real quick. So you guys, uh, copy those links over and, and um, on all possible. So my website. So I'll copy these right now. I'll copy them to Facebook, and we'll copy these over to YouTube. How's the music so far? Music is uh, not too loud. Hopefully, I know some some of you guys don't like it too loud. If you guys have anything you guys been working on and would like to post it, um, feel free to post it and I'll check it out and give you guys a review if you guys want. You got it, Gary? But yeah, one thing I didn't touch too much last time on was on hands. I just kind of blocked them out. Here's kind of what we have for our little guy. He did have a backpack thing, but I've been changing his proportions around so it kind of lost some of that let's um, so the thought behind this backpack is that he's kind of just <coughs> He's kind of being hovered around with this backpack that has tentacles. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, oh, there's no music. <laughs> that's uh, let's check let's check that out. What's going on? How about now? Is that better now? Can you guys hear the music now? Oh, let me uh, let me get that Instagram link for you guys. Yeah, check that out. You guys can see the progress of what's what what I changed on the alien. Um, he changed quite a bit from looking very like primitive like, and you know very blocked out to a little more refined. You guys can see that. And it all started from my iPad sketch on, on Forger, so it's nice that you could bring that stuff into Forger from Forger to ZBrush. How's the music now? Is that uh is that better now? I hope a little bit. Hey, how's it going, Travis? Thanks for joining. <coughs> yeah, I've been a bit under the weather this last week, so it's been a little tough. Cool. 
Well, let's get started with some of this stuff so that we don't get too, uh, too boring here. So yeah, so the ideas that he's sitting on on this thing are kind of being moved around by it. But let's also block out some of the stuff that I was thinking about uh, for the shape, main shape of it. And I always start off with a pending of sphere. That's the easiest. Where's everybody tuning in from today? So here's like a, a good way that I'm kind of thinking about how this is going to work out. Um, like these tentacles are kind of coming from his back, moving him around, right? So his feet are almost always floating and his hands are always floating too. That's kind of the thought behind this guy. That's why his, his doesn't really need much, much of his body, right? But later on, we're going to rotate them to be more, you know, flexible and, and things like that. But for now, I want to kind of keep them straight so it's easier to work with. So I'm thinking something like this. And they probably have four, two or four of them, kind of, or it, it maybe it may do less than kind of tripod. Oh, the UK, awesome, Mexico, nice. Yeah, you gotta get that 2020.1.1 installed, man. It, it, it makes a big difference. Oh, you haven't scoped it anything yet. Oh, man. Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of looking back and forth at some of these guys, some of the different comments you guys are posting up, so I'll probably start hitting some of those, uh, answering some of those questions. Uh, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. It's you know something like that. So he's always hovering, and so his body's not really. It's being held by this, this thing, whatever this backpack thing is. So I just imagine like in the future or in space or some advanced uh, civilization, like they they don't they don't need to walk. They can just think about what they want to do, and it just starts to happen. But that's kind of the idea behind that. We'll work on that some more, but I think we're going to concentrate on some hands today. <coughs> They've been kind of neglected a little bit. We'll be jumping around, you know, kind of working on different parts of the torso as well. Since these were all just kind of blacked out, nothing that is too, too defined. We'll maybe get rid of that backpack for now. Yeah, I've been pretty good. Just kind of staying, you know, still working. Since I already, I've been working from home for the last year or two. For me, it's kind of normal to work from home. I know for some people it's been it's been hard. Uh, I started from a sphere. Yeah, I started from uh, all these different pieces. Started from like simple primitives. You guys, you guys can see here uh, that I just kind of merged together, and they're not even fully merged like uh, what you would think uh, for. Let's isolate those guys <coughs> for a hand. So we're going to start blocking out the hand a little nicer. I'm, I'm almost thinking of a, another, giving it one more finger. I'm thinking that would be, that would be kind of cool. Another tool that I like using a lot is uh, like move, move topological. Because in this case, I might want to move some of these like basic hand proportions a little more, a little stronger, you know, to give to make those knuckles a little more emphasized. Or if I want to just move the polygroups, it's much easier to move them this way than the other way. And we also probably need to give it a lot more resolution because five was not enough. So let's see. 
so here's one issue so one of the main one of the main things that i like working with is this uh dynamish but using groups as you can see the group as a separate piece of geo so let me see how it's still not connected but if i were to fuse it now now it's connected and i don't want that yet so <coughs> instead of keeping all these separate pieces i want to keep them all in one in case i do want to move them as one unit right but I like using uh, keeping the groups groups on, so that way I can still get more resolution out of this. But you know, it's still separate. So if I decide to add another finger, I can. You know, uh, like if I wanted to isolate this and then reverse it, right? I could duplicate this finger over um, if I wanted to. <coughs> I think it's a shift and. Alt. Control. Oh, it's weird. It doesn't want to duplicate. Well, no big deal. There's always multiple ways to do this. Uh, one way you can do it is by finding your tool. I just like to work on the move my tools up that I'm working on. Uh, so one thing I could do is duplicate it, right? Uh, get the finger that I want to keep and then um, delete hidden and now I have that extra finger if I wanted to move it around so if I wanted to see kind of what it would look like with the third finger I can like this guy is a little distracting I can start seeing like, oh, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Does it look weird? I'm thinking it kind of needs that other finger. And I could do auto groups on these guys too. <coughs> so if I were to merge it down with the other hand, with the other pieces of the hand, then they have their own, their own groups. Yeah, I tend to just build everything in ZBrush. I used to sketch a lot of stuff in um, in Photoshop and stuff like that, and that's fun too if you, if you're really quick at it. And, I, and sometimes you get the ideas out and you like know they're gonna work or they're not gonna work. But I just tend to sketch everything out here, and then see if it if it's even worth doing. And especially if it's something so rough like like I have now, that uh, you know, <coughs> if I don't like it, I could just remove it. Maybe hold uh, uh, Alt uh, and tap. It kind of puts uh, the locator or the mover translator gizmo wherever you want to kind of on, on the face, which is nice. Because then I could now scale this guy up. start seeing what it's, what it's looking like I think having the third finger might be might be good I think we're gonna stick with it <coughs> Would I remesh it? Uh, yes, so I would probably Z remesh it. Uh, that's kind of what I did with the head. The head was uh, kind of different pieces and it still is a separate piece, if you notice, um, compared to the rest of the body. So I would probably start fusing the torso and the head together, but right now I kept it all another another sub tool it's because I, I started using the resolution to kind of tweak some of the major volumes that I did, like, like the cheekbone and stuff. And of course, the topology is not going with it. As you can see, it's not like really. Uh, flowing but that's not a big deal because I'm gonna have to redo the topology if I want to make it like a production friendly model but you can still bring this this stuff into Maya even if it's too many polygons and render it which is really nice 
shot or oh, we had a little hiccup there um, and still render and make it look good and see if it's working or not let's get rid of this yeah I don't think they have that orientated to camera I think it's more orientated to normal based on your, your clicks you know Let's continue on this guy. <coughs> so some of the references that I, I looked up quickly, let me show you real quick. Uh, some of this stuff, like here, just kind of looking at different hands. You know, uh, maybe some of the webbing. What I kind of want to do with them, but you know, they're all they're all kind of all over the place. So it's it's almost like just rough inspiration of what I want to do with the fingers. There was one idea that I had too, where I kind of wanted two fingers to be merged together like like he has the, the three fingers right but they're fused together so that could work too um, that's a potential that I'm thinking about that might make it a little more out of the normal which maybe that that's that will work better now that I'm thinking about it but we can play around with this at least uh, shaping this this part of the, the hand let's give this a little more volume In that case, let's get rid of let's get rid of that guy. Cause I think I like that idea better. <coughs> so let's hide the rest of the body. So it's always a good idea to have reference. things these guys are doing with their reference. Everybody's doing okay. So there's one tool that uh, I wanted to talk to you about. I think I talked to you, some of you guys about it last time, but I'm gonna make it part of my, my shelf, is um, this is new move tool. It's uh, really cool. See everything working? Looks like there's a hiccup on one of the... Okay, it looks like the hiccup's only on YouTube, not on uh, anywhere else.
Yeah, there's this new move tool, so let me make a sphere. <coughs> Actually, let me make a cube because that makes that would probably make more sense than a cube. So usually if you're trying to move stuff, right, uh, let's say we're moving this, I would expect it to, especially when blocking stuff out right now, I would expect this to be all the way through, right? But if we look in the center, it's only doing it at the edges, or sometimes it'll do both of these edges but not the center, right? And that's kind of annoying. So with this new move tool, move infinite, if we move that, it's moving everything everything behind it so everything that's being projected it's it's like moving all the way you know um, as you would expect the move tool to work which is really cool from when you're blocking like a new head or something in proportions um, let's, let's try to let's see if we can uh, get rid of this guy Like, let's say you're trying to tweak something right now, and I know that I, this is part of the skull. Right, like I'm just tweaking some stuff. Now if I go all the way around, you see it's it's keeping the shape, although it's, it's like bringing the peak along with it and everything, which is really nice. You know, because if I'm moving that, see I'm getting the whole thing. If I were to do that with the other move tool, let's see. Like I get this dip in here. Yeah, it, it's a must, man. I, I'm gonna make it part of my shelf. But you see how it's even if, even if it's not symmetrical, or if it's symmetrical, it's, it's even worse because now you're getting like that dip in there, which you probably don't want. <coughs> well, at least what I know, I don't want it. <laughs> um, so that's what's really nice about this move tool, and I keep forgetting to add it to my shelf. So when I'm doing like blocking out stuff like this, like you're moving clay the way you think you should be moving the clay, or at least the way I know I, I should be moving it. Uh, so I would highly recommend you guys switch to that um, if you guys if you guys want to try that out. Let's get rid of that sphere. Yeah, there's a few there's a few brushes like that, a few a few tools that uh, are probably pretty useful for you guys. So I would recommend that one as as one of them that you guys should tweak. But of course, it's not needed all the time. It just, uh, I think it's really important when you're trying to move. Like when you try to do the basic block out, you know, like trying to get the planes correctly and make sure you're moving stuff around. Cause I, I always have the problem where like, I have to go back to the center section and then fill it or move it on itself. <coughs> yeah, I know it's amazing, right Travis? Oh, let's continue on that, that hand. So let's start introducing some knuckles. So this is, uh, I guess this is gonna be interesting because we're gonna be doing like double knuckles on some of this stuff. But we'll figure that out later when we get to that problem. So eventually, yes, I'll be moving some of these guys uh, and fusing them together, but not quite yet. So one thing I do too is uh, instead of moving over to the move tool and masking everything, sometimes it's easier to just use the move topological and make it really big and then just shift that whole thing over. But it all depends kind of how you like working, but that's one suggestion that I, I like I like to play around with. <laughs> one thing that I like doing too is like, I like having both of these fingers there, even though I'm probably just gonna detail one and then clone it to be the others. But it's good to see it all as a, as a full skeleton, you know? 
because then you get the sense of it is it like feeling right like for me like now the thumb is feeling too long <coughs> but that's fine because uh, we can tweak it now See, we're just trying to get the basic proportions down. <laughs> so at this point, we could <coughs> we could be pretty rough and start working on either clay or clay tubes and start being like pretty rough with some of these knuckles you know like how you want to introduce some of these knuckles in here like what is is a silhouette good enough and like no it's starting to become too too flat For me, it's it's all about just doing stuff for fun, like uh, like exper experimenting. Like, yeah, I have some references up, but nothing that I'm like copying. It's more like getting inspired by, which is a I think there's a big difference. That sometimes people like just copy. It's like, oh, I want to just copy the way that looks, or the way this is, and it's like, well, <coughs> it, it doesn't have to be that way, you know. You don't have to always copy. Just be inspired, like like a few of the wrinkles that, that are happening there copy some of them and then make them your own but if you're copying directly from another con some other person's concept that's a 3d object or a 3d ar artist it's it's like kind of defeats the purpose it's kind of boring you know so it's better to just kind of make your own stuff at, le at least for me uh concept concept part is is fun for me so I like doing as much as I can so here I'm just trying to add some basic forms some of the stuff that you know some of the stuff that's kind of getting lost all right man see you thanks for thanks for joining See you next time. It's like, are we getting the right read? They feel like really long fingers. <coughs> like, we're worried about, uh, anatomy but not too much at the moment right now we're worrying more about design and we're at anatomy as we're going so some of the stuff that i'm some of the stuff that i'm doing i'm correcting as i'm going with a little bit of anatomy if i see that it's starting to veer off too much I'm also thinking about hierarchy. Making his fingernails a little more pointy.
kind of like what's going on with the music. Feels like it's in that theme of alien like things. At this point, it's starting to feel like I'm gonna have to start merging these pieces together, which is fine. I feel like they're they're getting to the right stage. <laughs> Rook start getting rid of the groups, so I could fill in that gap much nicer. So now, <coughs> now they're all fused together. So I come in here. Or I need some clay to really finesse that. And we can still separate the, the fingers at this point and break them off if we needed to. Like one thing I want to make sure I get right is the webbing on the fingers, like this this webbing here. It's like if you look at your own hand happening with that and also one thing to always double check is how's that looking with this guy obviously right now we scaled that stuff too too much so we're gonna have to let's get closer to change the pivot change those hands to be um <coughs> this is the local yeah there we go so local symmetry sometimes uh, is not on. So when you have that issue, it's like it'll scale, it'll scale out of into the center of the of the model. So here you can start checking out those proportions working much better. Yeah, I think they are. I tend to switch back and forth a lot between uh, these modes. Looks like one of one of these. Uh, let's refresh uh, YouTube. There we go. I'm not sure what's going off with Twitch. Um, so sorry, guys. So I think I like what's going on here. It, it looks like proportions are filling okay. We should probably block out his feet too. Let's feel.
Yeah, that's kind of the way I started on my models. Everything starts off super rough. I know some of you guys were asking, like, like, does it always look pretty rough in the beginning? Yes, it does. It always looks pretty ugly, but, you know, it gets better. I always have reference here. I'm just blocking out a memory. <coughs> Let's see, any other questions? Uh, it depends. A lot of the stuff that I do is for, for film and other things. So uh, for a hero character, it's probably be like 30 to 40 days. But that includes uh, texture as well and and some basic uh, blunt shapes. Sorry, I'm getting like a sticky wake up today where it's just like the pens keep sticking. So here you see, we now we can get a better sense of his proportions. You can make them legs a little thicker. Just a little thicker. It depends. If it's just something for me, I, I could take forever or I could just do it in a day or two. It depends how inspired I am by whatever's going on. But one thing I tend to do is jump around a lot, so I think it's good to not get stuck. Like we'll continue working on hands in a minute. I just saw some things that I feel like I need to fix. Like look at how linear this became. So I'm trying to add a little bit more. And I think at this point I'll probably start fusing the body, or at least the torso part, <coughs> to his to his neck. Well, let's uh, let's just duplicate to do a quick test. So let's move his head that we like all the way up. I'm gonna duplicate it just to have a backup. Let's turn that one off, and then let's get the torso uh, and bring that up. So let's, uh, let's first let's get <coughs> let's take this all the way high. Excuse me, let me take a cough cough drop. Oh, you got it. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Oh, so this guy has subdivisions. Let's get rid of subdivisions. That's probably pretty high, but we're gonna uh, dyna um, mesh it and remesh it in a bit. Which I'm still not happy with some of the proportions on the body, but I want to get that neck fix. So let's move down. So now we can start playing around with 
the resolution, make sure we're not losing too much resolution on the head. Where are we dynamic? So I 128, obviously way too not enough. So let's go like one let's go like one K and see what happens. Getting there. It's not too bad. A little more than one K. Okay, that's not too bad. So I think let's go just a little higher. Let's go to 2K. That's pretty good. See, almost nothing changed. So now we can start working on fusing this together. To make these transitions a little nicer. Because I noticed on the render part, I also had some issues. I to look to... Um, Just not blended in enough. That's not bad. So that's kind of how I start to work all these all these parts up together. You know, they they all start different separate pieces like the hand, and they'll fuse them together and blend them. But once I have better control when they're all separate. Uh, just kind of like the hand we have now, right? Like we 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 did a whole bunch of changes. Uh, we had to scale it overall, and then um, we were able to fuse it together. Even now, looking kind of like the silhouette. It's looking pretty good, but the fingers are starting to look maybe a little too thin for my taste. Um, also need to adjust some of these major proportions here. Alright, to kind of keep, to, to have the break on the, on the knuckle, but not too um, broken. And now that these guys are fused together, I can also start blending some of this stuff, you know? So if something doesn't look quite right, I can go back and fix it, which I am going to. I turned off the uh, logo so it wasn't zooming into just the pieces that I wanted. So here I'm just using Alt to kind of get that to pinch. So now we have it kind of more, kind of what I wanted. We can start smoothing this stuff out. Let's continue. Let's look at some more references. See what else we can we can add. It's uh, nice and cool. Let's see. So here I'm just looking up this stuff, you know, kind of, you know, even though I have a hand in front of me, I just, I'm using it to sculpt, so I'm kind of looking at what makes a hand read like a hand right away, you know. 
just kind of looking at different things, the brakes. Start using some clay. Right, we're getting some of that. These are kind of bridged together. And we have this guy that we blocked in earlier. Give him a little more volume. Give this a little more volume, spread it out a little bit more. But you gotta be kind of pretty gentle with how much you're adding at this point, because obviously they want to destroy all your hard work. Right, so those are some of the basics. Let me choose to. Oh. Maybe start extending the wrist here. So we're starting some of these little wrinkles um, for the standard mission. of a bony landmark, you know, you can reinforce it with a little bit of clay tubes. Start reinforcing <coughs> the other side of the hand. lumpy thing on somebody's hand. I wonder if we start doing uh, A pans. Let's see if we look at some of that reference. Yeah, look at this. This could help uh, make it look more alien for sure. See how flat they get in some parts, and they'll, they'll feel like uh, little sausages. So maybe introduce some of that. Uh, so this is cool, where you start to play around with like anatomy, you know, from animals and getting inspired by different references. So it's not just all about human references. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, I just typed in palm of hand. That's kind of what I was using for the bottom reference and this is kind of what I'm using now to add a little bit more we will see like maybe his his um, his palm is not as extended as I'm making mine but I, I like mine but I could definitely extend like the knuckle area that help also you guys see how's it reading from a distance is it reading okay I also like the knuckle area it's also breaking up on on the A-pan.
we have a little bit of break up there. So I uh, had it on my smooth uh, stronger, so I wanted to reduce that to be the just a regular smooth. So that I don't completely just delete everything that I just did. I just kind of want to blend some of this stuff together. And here's where I know I need to make some of my fingers a little thicker so I can go with the... Uh, Infinite We can see what how that's looking with overall how's your reading It's getting there And the main thing is that I'm in no rush as well. This is just for fun. So enjoy the process, you know? That's one of the biggest things to enjoy what, what you're looking at, enjoy what you're, what you're trying to do. There's some more of the reference stuff you guys were asking about. <coughs> so like kind of looking at different deformations of the hand too. Posing as well, but the posing will come later because um, we'll probably be doing two different types of hands because I'm, I'm thinking of 3D printing this guy out. But look at this, this is a pretty cool reference. See how long those limbs are, like this this section is super long, this is very short. So maybe I need to introduce a little more shortness to my, my character. we can do that now I think we made our shorter already but let's just make it a little bit stubbier oh. That's one part of the fat pad that I don't, I'm not feeling, so I need to definitely add a little more of that. To me, that makes it feel a little more ape-like. start playing around with some of these proportions. a little longer bicep so it was feeling way too short are oh, your better observations um so 
Let's let's talk about that a little bit here. Let's go back. So some of the main things I was looking at is like um, like in this reference, right? Like looking at like how long this shape is, but if you read it, you might just read it as this, but it actually extends pretty far. He just has really deep wrinkles. So looking at the primary shapes and not and kind of ignoring everything in between. <coughs> it takes a while to be able to kind of do this. Um, let's see if uh, we can open up Photoshop real quick. Um, second when it opens up it takes a while usually it's like the the near the Photoshop gets the longer it takes to open I don't understand that that part So the way I tend to analyze, uh, like, like you see, you have this a pen, right? Uh, let me just find my layers, and make a duplicate of this. I tend to look at things more like this, right? Where, like, see, if you erase the detail, <coughs> you could really see the main shadows, right? Like, um, let me just add a real. Add a layer real quick. Like you look at these shapes, you can start seeing and there's like these primary shapes, right? If you really break it down and kind of like blur your eyes, you can really see those. Where sometimes it's it's hard to see that here. You know, if you don't connect all the dots and you get, you know, you get lost by all the detail, all the wrinkles that are really nice. So that's kind of what I mean when I'm analyzing the, the reference, you know. Hope that, hope that helps. Let's see, where did my hand reference go? One second. Does that help? Nope. That's kind of what I'm always looking at and then see how that's working with the rest of this. <coughs> I can see the foreground. The forearm looks okay now, but it, it feels like it needs some work on the inside. Actually, the outside part of it. Something got out of sync here. That's fine. Let's see. Yeah, try try blurring it, and eventually your eyes kind of just do it for you. I had that issue when I was like starting up and I couldn't didn't understand what people were talking about so I used to blur some of my images and then eventually I learned to kind of like do it by myself without having to use Photoshop to do that and then you know also find images that have very <coughs> a lot of contrast because then you can start seeing it right away sometimes if there's not enough contrast um, it's hard it's hard to decode that you know 
like the lighting it helps a lot if you could shoot your own reference that's even better because then you can move the light around and start seeing like oh this is how the volume really is as opposed to what you think it is um, guys look at these guys are complete I think that's fine um, let's see here I'm just kind of trying to look at everything and you know what's what's breaking what's not breaking So it's starting to feel okay. There was a huge gap here. <coughs> and it's a dimensional gap, so it's coming really from the back that fills the volume up. Um, that's why I kind of went to the back part. I guess these guys see they don't have no genitals or something. We'll figure that out. But I kept that other hit in there in case I mess this one up so much and then I could always go back and re-blend it. So that's one thing of advice that I would tell you guys is uh, probably um, have a backup, save backup so that <coughs> in this case, let's see. I think it's time to merge these guys together. There we go. Let's put that guy all the way up. And that's how I kind of start to merge pieces. see that if we want to make sure that we keep the resolution on the face that was almost 2k last time so that seems to work pretty good <laughs> so these guys should be all one piece Here's where you could go back to your smooth weight, a little higher. <coughs> Here's where you can start using some of your anatomy tool figures or any anatomy figure and start figuring out where the blending point is. Um, so we can start doing that, but I just wanted to make sure that it didn't feel too disconnected at the moment. See, that's that's feeling better. That's where I notice like all oh, the back is too skinny. Needs a little more rib cage. A little more scapula. A little more. 
march arch the back. But at this point, this mesh is starting to become pretty dense. So we could do what we did. We could do what we did to the head. It's also, like where's the front of the pelvis? Like it should be like right there somewhere. <coughs> so we could either do that now, or we could z remesh this as well. So I think this might be a good time to z remesh it. Um, <coughs> probably first again duplicate that guy in case he uh, we break it completely. Turn off the other guy. Geometry. Zero mesh. Yeah, we're probably going to switch over to the other guy that I was working on um, so we can push that guy a little more. I like working on two or three different projects at the same time so we can keep, keep it fresh. Let's see, almost there. details back <coughs> at this point since we're still working with um, just primary forms this is probably good enough Save this guy out and work on my other guy. Let's see, Let's just make sure it's label this guy. This guy, we're gonna get rid of some of the artifacts that we're, we're seeing here, just to fine tune the face a little bit more. <coughs> I haven't quite figured out what I want to do with this mouthpiece yet, but we're gonna explore that today. Let's see. So let's, uh, let's duplicate that just to make sure. Play around what we can do with this. Let me know if you guys have any questions.
see any questions. So I think adding some uh, little hints like this of spikes. I, I don't know, I always like adding spikes to some of these designs that I make. So that, I feel like that can also mimic it going down, so maybe this could be part of it. <laughs> so I, right now I feel like when I <coughs> extruded that out, it feels like he has a gag, a ball in his mouth. Which I didn't like, I don't like that shape, so I'm going to change that up a bit. We'll see what we can do with that. It doesn't have to be a huge spike. think of this design you guys are digging it <coughs> how do I decide uh, I decide based on uh, the level of completion right so I feel like the chest was uh, pretty good like the torso is getting there so I wanted to get rid of that so when I do more test renders I can see the SSS or the subsurface not not being cut off and being glowing on the neck I'm not sure if you noticed that on the renders they have a bit of a of a glow to them. Uh, I'll show you guys. Uh, like here, like if you go sideways, and you zoom in, there's something going on here that's, that's glowing because it wasn't attached. So that's a that's when I start to decide. Okay, it feels like I need to start blending that in to see what what this hole looks like, like the clavicle area. <coughs> or also here because real thin and then somehow it kind of cuts off um, and also it's a lot of it's based on level of completion you know like does it feel like it's like at the 75 percent mark then okay blend it with the head when the arms get to that point i'll do the same thing also if uh if the hands are starting to feel good then i'll, I'll work on the forearm and then the upper arm and then once i get those going i'll blend those as well So that's kind of my, I guess, my way of, of doing it, but, um, you know. There's no right way or wrong way of doing it. It's, it's kind of up to you. That, did that help you?
Let's see nothing from Facebook. Okay. Sorry guys for uh, Twitch people or anybody any other platform. I, I can't really see any of your comments, so it's kind of hard to uh, to respond in case you guys didn't see that. Any other questions? So here I'm thinking about kind of repeating shapes. Yes, yeah. So if you look at my high, my model, it's it's pretty dense. I think it's either the full resolution um, or a little lower. Uh, but let's see. Let me open that up. Okay, it's done here. Um, see, if we, if we click on it, it's it's pretty dense. Um, but it renders pretty quick because I don't have to worry about displacement maps or anything like that. And this is just a test to see the primary forms. <coughs> so as you can see, it, it works fine, you know. I think overall it's probably like um, a couple million, but not a big deal. It, it, you know, it works on the fly, you know, especially with this GPU rendering. Like you could see, you know, I could choose angle. And it's just like probably using Keyshot, but much better. If there's no hiccups. And some of the stuff is still, you know, as you can tell, it's still really the rough version, as you can, you can see it. It's still, I'm not lying to you about um, which pieces are what. You can see the hand, it's still the, the old hand. The arm is still all separate pieces. <coughs> but then once I start blending this stuff, then all these hard edges will disappear. Yeah, you got to start doing these t uh, test renders early on so that it doesn't, uh, it's, so it's no surprise later that um, like if, if you see something wrong, like I saw a lot of proportion issues that I wanted to fix. <coughs> so I started fixing those and then that's it, you know, it, it just kind of all went away. Like I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get resolved quickly instead of waiting to the end, cycling, you know, going through the whole cycle, and then you're like, oh, I need to fix all these things. As I catch them as, as quickly as possible. So, I think if you think about it that way, it helps a lot. Uh, what do I think about the Intel's Wacom Four, Intuos Four? Uh, the Intuos Four is pretty good. That's what I use for work all the time. I I only use the pretty much the Cintiq for streaming, but I use Intuos for, for work all the time and it, it's great. I, I, I did notice that it does eat through the nibs, uh, the little the little points, uh, the little tips quicker, but not a big deal, it comes with a few, so you just you know switch over. Uh, but I prefer a tablet overall, if I was gonna be honest, and I only had one option, probably tablet would probably be my best option. Cause then I, I could use a bigger screen and I have to worry about it in multiple screens where if I'm stuck with the 24 uh, HD, <coughs> which is great cause it's 4K, but sometimes I wish it was slightly bigger, like the 30, but sometimes I just wish it was slightly smaller. Uh, depends what, what you're using for, you know? Uh, but yeah, I use the pro models, the, you know? Yeah, which which is the, the four or whatever, or whatever the latest one is. But it really is up to you, man. Like, uh, it really is up to what um, what do you feel comfortable with? What would you prefer? That that's the main thing, you know. Like, 
I tend to try everything and then figure out what I like. Even even using like the iPad <coughs> on Forger, I really I really like using it. I wish sometimes I had a keyboard, but then that defeats the purpose. And at that point, I might as well have a, my laptop with me with ZBrush. So, I would say try it if you can. If you have a friend that has it, try it out. Ask them if you could use it for a couple minutes. See if if you like that, and if if you don't, you don't. And if you do, then that's your thing to go with, you know. So even these mechanical guys, I do the same way. Everything kind of separated, and then from there I start merging it together, depending on how I feel and what I want to do with it. You know, if I wanted to add more detail. This guy I'm trying to keep uh, very simple, like not add too many intricate things. To see, uh, I want to do some test printing on some things. Yeah, for character design, definitely. I, I will say even if, if you can, explore with the iPad and then bring it to ZBrush. Alright, uh, Restream. Oh, Restream, is it working now? I think Restream might be working. Let's, let's double check. Maybe. Let's see. <coughs> oh, yeah. There we go. It's, uh, too bad it's only like almost 80% uh, into the stream. It's working now. But uh, if you guys have comments, I can see them. I can see from all the all the platforms. Yeah, tr I would say try different things. You know, even the new Wacom One. Uh, I'm thinking of trying one of those out uh, for my workflow for my like portable laptop. Which one of these days I'll probably stream from a laptop and get one of those to try it out. See if it's worth it. Uh, the only thing that I heard that the screen is HD, but at that resolution or at that size, it might be okay. <coughs> and probably not good at the 24 like they used to be, but uh, I think it will work for the smaller, the smaller stuff. Let's see. What am I liking about this guy, and what am I not? Yeah, that mouthpiece is still bothering me. <laughs> well, at least restream is working. So if you guys want to ask questions, feel free to do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The interest Pro Medium is the best. It's a, the best size compared to the Antiques and uh, some of the other ones. Yeah. One well, glass restream is working now. One thing about uh, changing to all these different shaders, it, it really reveals that there's like, like me pulling all this stuff out without one stroke, uh, reveals that there's a lot of like artifacts. So I need to kind of go back and tweak some of those. Not a big deal, easy to fix, but it's good to see that stuff early on so you can kind of fix it if if you have time or if, or if that's important in the design. It might not be at the moment. But for me, something I have to figure out is his mouthpiece. I kind of feel like he needs to have something coming out of him, like little fillers. So I think that that might solve it. But also, one thing we can do is check out my reference for uh, helmets. I'll show you guys that. Uh, maybe we can look at some of this stuff and see what how some of these other guys have solved some of this. Like, uh, actually, it could be something like this with two little things sticking out. That could be cool. You know, 
or something like this guy with kind of teeth, but these are kind of going down. But that's just one example of things that I'm, I'm kind of looking at. <coughs> Yeah, make sure you guys check out the ZBrush uh, contest, the ZBrush guys co contest. It's uh, for the alien, uh, or not alien, but um, let, me, let me find the link for you guys. Uh, but I hope some of this stuff is helpful for you guys to, you know, see how people do it and different ways of approaching problems or design problems or just you know sometimes some tool doesn't work as nice as you it probably should or, or you need to use a different tool oh that's one thing uh, next time I'll try it I'll have um, I bought some of these brushes from Pablo the, the clay brushes that I've been wanting to use um, so this is what you guys should uh, check out check out the contest I'll post it on here <clears throat> Only 16 days left, so make sure you guys check it out. Really cool, really cool contest. A lot of awesome prizes. Um, I'm one of the judges, and, but there's a lot of amazing judges. So you guys have time, especially now. Uh, I would say give that a try. This would be the perfect time to, you know, spend some time making some cool designs and who knows, might win something. So I'm kind of thinking a little bit of like a rhino beetle, something like the or Goliath beetle, you know, um, that's kind of the reason I added that, introduced that horn in there. <coughs> it doesn't have to be huge, but it can, you know. That's kind of the thought, thought behind that guy. Yeah, good thing, good uh, restream is working now. to lose that part I really like this transition yeah sorry guys I know a lot of you guys are probably asking questions in some other uh, uh, platforms I didn't get to answer any of those guys so I only had <coughs> face Facebook and YouTube so if you guys have any questions feel free to ask uh, now since we still have about 15 minutes to go if you guys want to if not no big deal but it just sucks that uh, it wasn't working earlier But yeah, how, how do you guys feel about the format? <coughs> Switching uh, to two characters in, in one stream. Did that work for you guys? I noticed a lot of people liked that last time, so I kind of... It, it's nice, too, to kind of switch it up in the middle of the whole thing to kind of think differently. And also, some people don't like aliens. Some people do. So it's cool to maybe switch it up to some mech-looking character.
that's what I was gonna look up uh, Rhino Beetle on. So let's find a browser real quick. I closed everything up. <laughs> so this is kind of what I'm thinking. See, that's why there's a little bit of a horn depending on which which beetle, rhinoceros beetle, you're looking at. There's that horn. <coughs> so maybe I could implement some of the, like the mouth of the of the rhino beetle to kind of continue that theme. Okay, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are digging it because I think it keeps it more fresh. And then when we're done, it's gonna be cool because we could have uh, two different, two different um, things going on. You know, like two different prints. Yeah, I'll probably be printing, 3D printing these guys. I'll probably work on the full bodies and, and pose them up. Is that something you guys would like to see, like more of the, like what it also takes to prep these guys for printing? Um, if so, let me know, cause then I'll save some of that stuff for, for doing it here, as opposed to just doing it and then show you guys the result. But if you guys don't, that's fine as well. I'm just uh, give me you guys options. It's working. What do you guys think? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, do the prepping on this guy because this guy still has a lot more ways to go than the alien. But um, maybe in the next couple of days, since I am just here, <coughs> I could get these guys up, up and running, and get them, you know, done a little more quicker. Okay, cool, David. I wanted to add something to kind of break this part of the design, but struggling with that. But maybe it has, maybe it could just be a small little piece. So this guy we started a little differently. This guy started with a kind of 
kind of a scan we started with, so I wanted to make sure if I 3D printed it, it was going to be able to kind of fit, like fit a person. So that's kind of the, the point of this guy. <coughs> At this point, it still works with that. You just can't see, but that's not a big deal. He's an alien or some kind of, you know, uh, outer space thing. Let's see, somebody has some questions. Uh, Well, definitely, he's, he's, uh, I want to, I want to say he's a human, but he's human, humanoid-like, you know, probably takes his mask off or helmet off and probably looks like some kind of weird alien, um, but I wanted to keep the proportions pretty close to a human in case, like, I wanted to dress somebody up and cosplay or something, or if I wanted to make it like a one-six figure or something, uh, and then it will fit the overall body proportions, where I could extend maybe some of the limbs or the neck. But this guy's still fitting, but this guy started more like this, and then I kind of, out of C-Sphere, kind of just keep making variations and adding things. <coughs> but I kind of envision him, you know, I guess some kind of warrior. Uh, some kind of warrior, or... Uh, one, one thing my, my daughter has been watching is Power Rangers. She's been, she's only four and a half, so she's been watching Power Rangers, so it made me think about, like, what would like another Power Ranger look like if they were insect insectoids? Because I guess they have like the dino versions and all this stuff. So I was thinking like, oh, well, maybe he's like a or a mass rider or something like that. You know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Something just fun uh, from like stuff that I used to like as a kid, and now that my kids are looking at it, it's like, well, how can I maybe print out a character that my daughter can like? Um, I or if I was a kid, how what what kind of character would I want to make? Um, that's kind of that's kind of the whole point of these streams for me is to have fun with designs of cool things what inspires me what what doesn't you know like kind of mix those things together or or like global events you know like the alien <coughs> what's happening now i kind of decided to make like an alien and maybe i'll start making a bigger alien um what's it called theme that's mostly i didn't do it because of the contest the contest is its own thing you kind of interpret however you guys want to do that but uh for me that that was kind of the Part, part of it you guys are asking kind of what's what's the inspiration behind some of this stuff I really appreciate you guys joining and um, joining me in designing these guys and seeing the process hopefully helped you guys and inspired you guys to do your own designs. And if you guys um, <coughs> if you guys have any designs you guys would like me to look at or got inspired or did something, feel free to send me a message on Instagram or any of the social media. <laughs> Make sure you guys stay safe out there and hopefully you're staying home working on some zebra stuff. Um, there's, a, I think, a free 30-day trial, I think. Um, let me double check.
Yeah, there's this link. Let me let me share with you guys. Yeah, yeah, me too, man. There's so many cool designs coming out. And sometimes that stuff inspires me. You know, one thing that uh, I did start playing is Doom Eternal. So I'm sure you guys are going to start seeing some Doom Eternal inspired characters uh, in the near future. But I really appreciate you guys joining. Uh, hopefully you guys had some fun. Um, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thanks, guys. All right, see you guys next time. Have fun, keep sculpting, and give that, um, you know, social distancing. Make sure you guys um, do some ZBrushing and uh, tag tag all this stuff that I just posted for you guys on, uh, on Twitter. <coughs> and then we'll see what kind of stuff you guys are creating with this stuff. should be amazing. Cool, guys. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.